As a cybersecurity channel, anytime I talk about a malware sample, one of the top comments is always, oh my God, just switch to Linux. And I perfectly understand where that comes from. If you had Windows XP and you ran a random file from the internet, probably see something like this, followed by your system blue screening like we just experienced. Whereas something like that was much less likely to happen if you're running a distro of Linux. So if you had a simple user who just needed to get on the internet, it was much safer for them to do so from a Linux distro than from a Windows system, because on a Windows system, they could click on some random crap, whereas most of the malware, which is like an EXE drive-by download, isn't even going to load on Linux. However, once you actually get into the field of cybersecurity, you'll realize very quickly that Linux malware is almost just as prevalent as Windows malware, especially today. And I wanna start off with an example of a Mirai botnet. So here we have a distro of Linux on any run. And if we do a very quick analysis of this particular sample, there are HTTP requests, connections being made. And in a few minutes, we have malware command and control activity for Mirai, which is a very popular botnet and one of the most infamous malware samples out there. Typically, it doesn't really target you as a desktop user on Linux, but it targets every single IoT device that's out there, your smart refrigerator, your television, your router, your thermostat. All of those could get infected by malware like this and become part of a botnet that can then be used to launch massive DDoS attacks, taking down company servers and doing all sorts of nefarious things, maybe even attacking a country. In the past, I have made videos showcasing infamous ransomware executing on Linux. So malware on Linux is not really a new thing, and it's important to understand if you truly want to get a broader perspective on cybersecurity. Another interesting thing worth noting is that Linux isn't immune to vulnerabilities either. If we look at all-time leaders for vulnerabilities, number one is Debian Linux, number two is Android. Windows doesn't even appear on this list. It's way over at number 10. Now, I'm not saying this is some kind of absolute absolute measure of security. A lot of Windows vulnerabilities have been really severe and impacted users in a way that many Linux vulnerabilities have not. But my point is cybersecurity is not a Windows problem. It's a problem on every platform. And I think far too many people in the comment section in IT, and I'm not talking about the cybersecurity analysts here, everyday users tend to have this view that all of cybersecurity problems are because of some kind of poor Windows architecture or something. Don't get me wrong, many of them are. But cybersecurity and malware isn't even limited to your computer. These days, most major incidents in malware, especially the ones that make headlines, are often delivered by social engineering, not by drive-by downloads or Internet Explorer. If we go to one of the main malware repositories, Malware Bazaar, and have a look at the statistics, you might be surprised to find that the top malware families are Mirai and Agent Tesla. Mirai, of course, is a botnet, and it's primarily distributed on Linux, and it's currently leading the charge with 911 submissions. Now, a lot of these are not going to be desktop PCs. They might be vulnerable routers running the botnet. But similarly, if we take a look at the top tags, we have EXE, but it's followed very closely by ELF, which is the equivalent of EXE on Linux. So we have 1,528 samples that were EXE submitted and 1,101 ELF. So these days it's a lot more even than you think. And a big reason for that is a lot of cyber criminals, especially the ransomware gangs, target large corporations and they have a lot of servers on Linux. So for example, if we take a look at the Hive ransomware, which was a popular ransomware in the last few years, we have an EXE variant, but we also have an ELF variant. So once the ransomware authors manage to infiltrate an environment, they're going to deploy whichever version of the malware is necessary based on the platform. So they don't just give up if you're on Linux. Now we can actually analyze one of these Linux samples with any.run because they've added the capability to do so. And they've also sponsored this video just to let you know that you can now run your analysis on Ubuntu. For those of you who don't know, any.run allows you to analyze files without running a virtual machine yourself. You basically just upload it and then you can watch it executing live on their virtual machine and you get a full breakdown of all the processes, all the connections and the DNS requests that were made. And the any.run analysis this does indicate malicious activity, but we can dive deeper and get a quick like MITRE ATT&CK view of this. And as you can see, it says file and directory permissions modification, Linux and Mac file and directory permissions, in addition to execution through command and scripting interpreters. This is exactly what ransomware like Ryuk does on Windows. And if we quickly go into public tasks, we can actually search for latest ransomware submissions. 
we've got a sample of Lockbit here. So if we look into this analysis, as you can see, we've got a nice desktop background. But if we look into the MITRE attack techniques, again, you have execution methods. This is via a service, which is a different component on Windows. And if we look specifically at a Ryex sample, go into the same attack categories, you can see that we have file and directory permissions modification. We actually also have the use of command and scripting interpreter via the Windows command shell. So again, on Linux, the shell is different, the commands are different, but at the end of day, if you're an attacker, you can find a way to get the computer to do what you want to do. It doesn't mean there aren't technical differences in how the ransomware can spread or how easy it is to get infected on Windows, but malware on Linux is definitely a thing in 2024. In fact, when I go to conferences and I meet my friends in security research, a lot of them are working exclusively on Linux malware or presenting papers on botnets where the majority of the infected devices are Linux systems. So if you would like to get into Linux malware analysis, consider checking out any.run using link in description. It's one of the most convenient tools I've found to quickly analyze sample and sandbox. They also have all of their public submissions and threat intelligence available. If you're a corporate user and you're trying to do security research, this can be quite handy. And they do have a wider variety of plans than other threat intel sites. So you can get something a bit more reasonably priced if you're just an independent researcher. So do feel free to reach out to them and ask for a specific plan or access to check out some of the features if you like. Link will be in the description. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, stay informed, stay secure.